Good morning. Today is Sunday, May the 28th, 2017. It's about 5.45 in the morning. We're here in, I'm not sure how you mount this, it's K-E-H-L. I woke, during, woke up during the night just as we were getting to this bridge and stopped. Fascinating just to lay here and watch the Rhine River flowing by. Pretty. And then from here we get a ride into Strasbourg. Here comes a ship up. Pretty. And he got one potato on his plate. Our luggage arrives. We got them different clothes today. <laughs> for a change. Yeah. Had them the same one for three days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. That's the decal coffee. Here's my breakfast. Well, thank you very much. I already had a couple bites of egg. Are you making mm -hmm. a video? Mm -hmm. Oh. Good morning. Oh. And I'm Kate. Thank I'm you. the waitress here. <laughs> We're some of the first ones down at seven. And then I asked my sister, oh no. <laughs> Here we go again. It's about to be able to get our food. That was kind of scary. I had to go watch it. Well, we just got out of the taxi. Y'all standing in the shade. Y'all traveled before, y'all. Speakers, I think. <laughs> A loud voice only. Only a loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So should I stick to the English or should I switch to the French? <laughs> English is still better for everyone. All right. So a little bit. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to France. Welcome to Strasbourg. You've seen that we have a control on our border because we are still under the state of emergency in France. So that's why we still have a control on our border. The state of emergency started in November 2015 and it should end in July. Uh, so in about two months from now, let's see the decision of our president maybe to l make it longer. We still don't know today. But you may have seen how easy it is uh, to go from Germany to France. Uh. In fact, there is no official border. The natural boundary is the Rhine River that we just crossed. And there is no official border because France and Germany, in 1985, both of them signed what we call the Schengen Agreement. And when you sign this agreement in Europe, you don't have any border between the countries anymore. It's not all over Europe the case. Huh? If you go to UK, if you go to Ireland, you still need to cross the border because they didn't sign the Schengen Agreement. But you know, for us, living in Strasbourg, it's very comfortable to not have this border between France and Germany because I have to be honest with you, we love going to Germany. Do you know why? The beer is a good reason, <laughs> but not the main reason. And especially Miroslav comes from Czech Republic. And you know the Czech people are saying that they are producing the best beer. So don't let do an argument about the beer on that bus. What else? Shopping. Shopping is much cheaper on the German side than on the French side. In 1944. So since 1945, we are French. Until when? I don't know. You never know uh, what can happen in the future. But if you're wondering about what we feel today, if we feel more German or more French, I can easily answer you. First, we feel Alsatian. You are in Alsace. And just on your right hand side, you have a Russian Orthodox Church in construction. So we have a strong identity here, Alsatian, because you have just to imagine that in 60 years here the people change four times <coughs> the citizenship and sometimes the citizenship was not enough so we change the name of the people give you one personal example my grandfather who was born in 1924 he was called René in French he became Reinhardt during the second world war to become René again after the war so we are a little bit different we are a bit special like the French are <coughs> used to say 
Have you noticed these nice houses on your left hand side? Huh? Most of them were built by the Germans, end of the 1800s. And uh, it was because Strasbourg became at that time the capital of what we called Alsace-Lorraine. You may have heard about <coughs> Alsace-Lorraine, right? That was a region created by the Germans in 1871 because they annexed the entire region of Alsace, took a part of Lorraine, put that together. And they they make Strasbourg become the, become the capital. So you have thousands of Germans who arrived to work in our town and they needed to find a place to live in. There is a lot of playgrounds for the kids. It's also a place which is really appreciated by the runners. We might see some of them each time I see them. Each time they make me feel bad. And in that park, we have also a center of preservation for one bird, which is our symbol. What kind of bird is that? 1800s. You know the storks are migrating birds. So they usually leave us end of August, spend the winter in Africa, come back mid of March. At the end of the 1800s, they did not come back. Like the scale of justice. But believe me, when you look at the front of that building from the sky, it looks like the ears of Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. Like a ship, and that was made on purpose by the architect, because he said the building is gonna, locate, is gonna be located along a river so I'm going to build it as a ship docked on that river. And you're going to see the river in a few seconds on your left hand side. And he put a lot of windows because he tried to show the transparency of justice. And that European Court for Human Rights can be used by every citizen of Europe today. Do you know how many countries are still belonging to the EU today? European. 28, officially still 28, even if George would like to hear 27, but still 28 officially. You're still going to see the UK flag in front of the parliament, but you know that UK voted the Brexit huh, one year ago, because the EU, it's an ongoing process. It's not over yet. Countries will leave us, countries will join us. And in fact, you have 15 arches on the right hand side. And why 15? Because the parliament was built in 1999, and there was 15 countries belonging to the EU at that time. So after the war, we wanted to thank them for that. We gave them name to streets and squares in Strasbourg. Have you noticed that we have grass on our tramway lines? Yes. yes? Do you have an idea? Bless you. Do you have an idea why we put grass on our tramway lines? For what reason? No. No. The dust. No? Sound. Sound. It's less noisy for the neighbors around. And the second reason is linked with the national sport that we have in France, that everyone does in his daily life. Not soccer. Footing. No. Complaining. I know that we are great complainers. We built the first tramway lines in the 1990s. Because that's where we pay our income taxes. So it's not where we like to go, as you can imagine. But as we continue driving, you will see on your right hand side another big building, which is the former palace of the German emperor. The German emperor, when he was coming in Strasbourg, was sleeping in that building on your right hand side. And that's the, that was built, in fact, for William I. But it was used by his grandson, William II, who was also the grandson of Queen Victoria. And he was called Kaiser Bill by the British. And if you look underneath the French, the French flags, you can still see the German eagle, symbol of the German Empire. And to be honest with you, Kaiser Bill never appreciated that building. He said it looks like a train station. So he slept once, and the rest of the time he was at the hotel. And we call that building today the Palace of the Rhine, because in it you have the offices of the European Council for the Navigation on the Rhine River. By building that new district, the Germans tripled the size of Strasbourg. As we are turning on your right hand side, the National Theater of Strasbourg, and on your left hand side, you have the academic library of our town, three million books inside of that library today. And next Wednesday, you're gonna be in Cologne. When you're gonna visit Cologne, you will have just to imagine that Cologne was exactly like Strasbourg, like that, where we are right now, before the Second World War. But as Cologne was flattened during the Second World War, they lost these kind of buildings that we still have the chance to have today in Strasbourg. So right now, the city works with UNESCO to list 
that German district to belong to the World Heritage list of UNESCO. It's a Calvinist parish, and that church of St. Paul, uh, it's, uh, it was the church for the German garrison, so for the German Protestant soldiers. And they had to attend to the church service on every Sunday morning, and in that church you have 17 doors for the students. Uh, and that's what we call Strasbourg Beach. Uh, <coughs> yeah, try to find the sand. Huh? We have some palm trees, huh? but to be honest, we are really far away from the ocean and from the sea. But it's just nice during the evening, you know, to sit down on this terrace and you get a breeze from the river. So that's why we call it Strasbourg Beach. River I double L. So if we if we translate it, it means the sick river. And it's this ill river which is surrounding the great island of Strasbourg where the old town is located, where the cathedral is. And you can see the top of the spire of the cathedral on your right hand side. And it's on this island that we are going to do the walking tour. And if you keep looking on your right hand side, you see that white building which is called the Palace of Rouen. It looks old, but it's a baby is from the 1960s. The original building was from the 1300s. And the original building was destroyed during the bombings that we got in 1943-1944. So we rebuilt, in fact, the building, but we made a copy of it. And this, the original building was used as the customs house of Strasbourg. So it was the center of the business until the 1800s, uh, what you see on your right hand side. And I have the time for the question. It was on this island that everything started, especially with the Romans in 12 before Christ.